everybody, it's Stacey Duffy here, your Denver Metro Real Estate Resource. And today I wanted to answer a question that Kevin left for me down in the comments of one of my other videos to talk about the appraisal process when you're buying a home. So, and I've done a video on appraisal gap coverage if you wanna strengthen your offer in a multiple offer situation. So I'll link to that down below. Um, and I'll talk about that later where that applies. But I haven't really done one just going through the appraisal process. So I'm gonna kind of do this from the buyer side and I'll probably do another one from the seller side because it's a little bit different point of view and different goals in the end. Um, but anyway, so as far as why you need an appraisal or what it is and all that jazz, let's just start with an example, right? So let's say you're a buyer and you wanna buy a property and you found one and it's $300,000 and you're like, yeah, cool, I think it's worth that. I'm willing to pay that. Seller says, cool, that's what I want for it. I think it's worth that too. You get together and wanna make a deal, right? So you fill out a contract, buyer and seller sign it. And then buyer, unless you have a whole bunch of cash in your pocket, you're probably gonna need to get financing, which you should already have lined up, um, to help you buy the house, right? So just because you think it's worth that and the seller think it's worth that, even if the agents think it's worth that, the lender says, that's cool, but I'm the one putting a lot of money on the line here. I want to make sure that it's worth that. And for me to know that, I want an appraisal. And so what an appraisal is, is it's a licensed appraiser, at least here in Colorado, they have to be licensed. Different states have different requirements. But it's a licensed appraiser going out, looking at the property, taking pictures of the property, and then comparing the property to other comparable solds, if that's an option, um, either determining the build cost of, you know, hey, if we had to build this property, what would it be worth? And looking at market conditions, then they have a few different models that they have to go through. So Anyway, so the appraiser is going to go out and do all of that and they kind of get to play judge, jury and executioner, right? So they're going to do an appraisal and then come back to the lender and kind of give most scenarios is going to be one of three options, right? They're going to say, yep, it's worth what everyone thinks it's worth and what the buyer is willing to pay for it, which is the contracted purchase price. If so, great. Lender says, cool, check that box. It's worth what everyone thinks it is. And I'll keep moving on with pre-approval and underwriting and everything else, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So second option is it's worth something different, whether that be slightly more, or slightly less. So slightly more, great, buyer, you have some instant equity. Um, you can't really do anything with that equity until you go to refinance the property or you want to get a home equity loan or um, sell the property or something like that. But it should give you some nice warm fuzzies knowing, oh, it appraised for, you know, 305 and I wanted to pay 300. Awesome. Um, and then if it comes in slightly less, here in Colorado, at least, it's an opportunity to negotiate with the seller because the seller doesn't have to sell you the property for any less than what the contracted purchase price says, right? That's what everyone agreed to pay just because the lender says, mm, appraiser says it's not worth it. Seller doesn't have to sell it to you for any less than that. So there's a different options there as far as negotiating and, and how we work through that. Ideally, you can get the deal worked through and then continue on to final underwriting and approval and get it closed. Or three, which is a little less common scenario, but it does come up from time to time. The appraiser may say, hey, yes, the property is worth this or is worth a certain number subject to certain things being changed, right? Um, so here in the Colorado State contract, it's section 6.3, or at least right now it is. I'm sure that'll change when the contracts change every couple of years. But um, what that says is that the lender may have some property requirements or changes to the property given what the appraiser says, right? So, and an example of that might be, okay, cool, appraiser says, yeah, it's worth that, but there's this health and safety issue where there's not this guard railing on an outside deck stairwell or something like that. And that's a safety issue. If someone were to hurt themselves, that needs to be taken care of. Not necessarily saying it's directly associated to the value of the property, but it's kind of the lender's way of making sure that they've got everything covered they need for regulatory reasons as well as for value reasons. So it's either going to be at purchase price, uh, above or below, or at some value subject to some certain conditions. But um, those are kind of different scenarios that I can walk through in more detail if needed. But anyway, so after the appraisal, um, ideally if either all the conditions get resolved or if it's below, we come to some sort of agreement on price or if it comes in at or above the price, cool. Then the lender says, all right, I have what I need. Check that box. We figured out the value situation. 
Now let me continue underwriting and make sure that my buyer is still employed and still wants to buy the property and all of that type of stuff. So hopefully that kind of walks through the appraisal process a little bit from a buyer's perspective. Um, Oh, and I mentioned if for some reason it comes in below value, that's where that other video that I linked down below about appraisal gap coverage, you can kind of pre-negotiate that and make a seller feel better about what could happen if that comes up. Um, so that's a good situation for that. So anyway, take a look at that if you want more information on that. Um, but anyway, if you're liking my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any other comments or questions, you can leave them down below. And if you'd like to reach out to me directly, you're welcome to do that as well. My contact information is on my website and the link for that is down below as well. So thanks so much for the time guys and have a great day.